Okay, David Mandel back here. And um, what we're going to look at now is Chapter 7, Working with the Bash Shell. Primarily what we want to look at is um, uh, Bash Shell programming. Um, so we might talk just a little bit about computer programming in general. Um, this is all a review, I think, from classes you've taken previously. But uh, first thing, let's talk about what a computer program is or a programming language. Um, when I talk about a programming language or a computer, well, a computer programming languages, I mean languages that um, require the use of um, random access memory. Uh, random access memory was a real revolutionary invention that happened during the 1940s, early 50s, um, where you can write instructions and jump to different places. Um, a computer language, in my mind, is something that it has branching statements, like an if statement or an if else, um, and looping statements, like commonly called for statements, do statements, or or something where you can have some code that goes around in a loop, around and around and around, and then has some sort of a criteria where if something happens, it will jump out of the loop or jump to the end of the loop with, say, a go-to statement or um, modern languages are more structured and don't allow go-to statements, but older languages often use a go-to statement. Um, modern ones just jump out of the loop um, at the end of a while statement or something of that type. Um, <clears throat> early computer languages are these list are so, some of the early computer languages are listed here. Things like um, Fortran was the earliest computer language. We still use it today. Looks very much like algebra. And uh, it's, it's greatly loved by mathematicians today. Um, although it was a very widely used language today, it's mostly used by the mathematical community. Um, people who work on supercomputers, huge parallel computers, things of that type. Um, and um, COBOL was another language which is more business oriented. The truth is, since I'm not a business oriented person, I don't know how much it's used today. Lisp, which was an early language, maybe the third language ever written, is still around and still used. And in fact, my favorite editor, GNU Emacs, is written in Lisp. Uh, and it actually has a something called Emacs Lisp, so that if Emacs doesn't do something, you can write more code and add it to Emacs. Um, and then there's other languages here. <coughs> Later on, we developed a whole set of languages that I often call scripting languages. Uh, languages like Perl, Python, Ruby, PHP, TCL, um, and JavaScript. Uh, Java Java's kind of different. It doesn't really fit this category. but um, um, but, um, OK. Languages can also be broken into two categories or two or three categories, uh, one of which is called compiled languages. These are languages that are, um, you run through a process called a, through a translator called a compiler that translates the code from the algebraic code or human readable code that programmers um, write and it translates it directly to the machine language, uh, the zeros and ones that the CPUs actually talk in. Uh, those languages are languages like um, Fortran and C. And typically, they run very, very fast, or any of the assembler languages. And typically, they run very, very fast. Um, the other type of language is called interpreted languages. Those are languages where the um, where an interpreter <coughs> reads the code line by line and steps through the code each time, uh, steps, keeps stepping through the code just as the, as the program's written. 
Uh, interpreted languages tend to be quicker and easier to develop code in, but run much, much, much slower. And then there's the modern interpreted languages are sort of in between interpreted and compiled in that they you run a what is often falsely called a compiler. You run a program on these languages that tokenize the language, making the lookups to do the interpretation much, much faster. And the truth is, most modern scripting languages like uh, Perl, Python, Ruby are um, tokenized languages. They, they have a way of speeding up the interpretation a great deal. They often call it, um, they often call that process compile, but it really isn't. It, it's, uh, it's not compile in the same sense that C or Fortran uses that word. Um, I prefer the word tokenize. Um, OK. D another um, division in languages is um, uh, procedural languages versus um, object-oriented languages, which you may read about. Um, I personally tend to be bigger on uh, procedural languages. I will say I have always struggled when writing code in object-oriented languages. Uh, many people just totally love object-oriented languages. I'm a little less inclined that way personally, but um, you know, to each their own, and and each environment seems to work better on certain classes of problems. Um, <coughs> next, um, the next type of languages are called shell scripts. These are very, very simple interpreted languages. They are computer languages. They have if statements. They have. Um, 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 all the structures of other computer languages, but they, they really are ran line by line by line. Uh, there's no attempts to compile them or make them faster. They tend to be more primitive in some ways, but they are very, very good at doing a lot of systems tasks. So we study and use those to this day. The one that we will study is the Bash shell programming language, or the, or I will sometimes say Born shell programming languages. Um, the shells you can use with Linux and Unix, there's two different classes of shells. Maybe there's more than that. But, but they're in the early days of AT&T, when AT&T developed Unix, they came out with a shell called the Born shell. Um, and I don't know the exact history of it. It was a fairly primitive shell, um, but it worked well. Um, the language is pretty unstructured. So when um, University of California at Berkeley got a hold of a copy of Unix, they decided to rewrite a lot of things or write add-on products, one of which they wrote was something called the C shell, which has a nicer programming language that goes with it and um, had a lot of nicer features. Um, but then people that were looking at the Born shell decided, well, they got to look at the C shell and decided there was ways to improve the Born uh, the Born shell, so they invented, I don't know, some other shell that was Born shell-like, but a little bit better. Um, and then there was the corn shell, which was Born shell-like, but a little bit better. And then the C shell people invented yet another sh shell, um, TCSH shell or something like that. And the uh, Born shell people responded with something called the Bash shell. So. There's a whole series of shells that can be used with Linux or Unix. Um, and they tend to be two groups of them. The one is born shell-like shells. And that includes Bash, which is our favorite shell with uh, Linux. And the other one is C shell-like shells. And um, they tend to be very, very popular with BSD users. Um, um, not as popular with Linux users, but they do exist on Linux, and you can use them on Linux. Um, 
All the coding we will do in this class will be in the Bash shell, or I will sometimes call it the Born shell. The Bash shell and the Born shell programming languages are almost identical. There are a few things that may not work in the, uh, that only work in the Bash shell and don't work in the Born shell, but that's like very, very few things. 99.5% of everything uh, that works in the Bash shell works in the Born shell, and 100% of anything that works in the Born shell works in the Bash shell, or something like that. Okay. Um, the next thing we want to do in discussing Chapter 7 is we probably want like to review the Bash shell and um, uh, the Bash shell command line editor. I'm not going to go into this. We talked about it in the past. And what I'm going to do is I'm giving you a link to a video on uh, YouTube or, or elsewhere um, that I think does just an excellent job of discussing the, um, the um, uh, Bash command line editor. Um, I believe it's on the website teachmetocode.com, teachmetocode.com. And I'll put a link in that um, in our, um, I'll give you a link to that. So, um, OK, the other thing is the um, path statement. Remember the path. Um, there are something that uh, there are, we have environmental variables in the Born shell, or the C shell as well for that matter. Or, uh, but we have environmental variables. If you type the command set, this will list all your environmental variables. And they go on for a long, long, long ways. And um, um, I am not going to go through all of those. But one of your environmental variables, now, if I want to evaluate an environmental variable, like I think there's one called path, I could type echo path. But that's just going to echo the word path. To use this as a variable, I need to put a dollar sign in front of it. And that will echo what my path is. OK, my path is the location I can, um, where I can put commands. Anything in any of these um, directories will get executed as a command. Basically, when the shell is looking for a command, it goes out and goes into all these directories and uh, looks in all these directories for commands. Doesn't look elsewhere. So if I have a command elsewhere, I have to put in the full path name. Notice that the first place it looks is in my personal bin directory. That's probably because I did something to put that in my path. The next place it looks is in a system directory slash USR slash local slash bin. Um, many, many distributions will put that in your path statement. That's where local systems administrators put locally developed commands. Um, that's a good place to put locally developed commands. OK, how do you change your path statement and get it so it will execute every time you log on? Well, the best way to do that is if we type ls minus l. Oh boy, we've got a lot of stuff. But you will see that we have a file called dot bash rc. Dot bash rc. Um, bash rc is a place that we can make local changes to our variables, um, to our environmental variables. Let me stop here and start up again on part two.